Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. This is the first video that I'm posting on my channel, and in this video we are going for the Platinum for Horizon Forbidden West. I really like the Horizon series. I got the Zero Dawn Platinum Trophy. It was actually the second Platinum Trophy I ever got. I got it right when I got my PlayStation 5, and overall uh, I had a good time with it, so I'm excited to see what Forbidden West has in store for me. Uh, Forbidden West came out about a week before Elden Ring, so I was excited for wh when it came out, but Elden Ring just took over my entire life. I played that game so much, and I never got around to Forbidden West. Now that it's been added to PlayStation Plus, uh, I figured I'd give it a shot. So let's see how it went. The first chunk of trophies comes from completing the main story. I'll try to keep spoilers light here. The main story can be split into a couple of chunks. You start the game in the eastern section of the map called the Dawn. Once you're officially in the West, the game really opens up, and all the different types of side quests and activities become available. Just like in the previous game, you've got tall necks to override to reveal the map, cauldrons to explore to unlock override abilities, and a handful of different collectibles to grab, like relic ruins, vista points, and black boxes. The game does a nice job of making each of these tasks feel unique. Each tall neck kind of feels like a mini environmental puzzle. For this one, you need to figure out how to climb higher and higher through this treetop village. Another tall neck is found half submerged in water. You need to reboot it and then find a way to jump on top of it. When it comes to cauldrons, these are mini dungeons that take about 30 minutes to complete. They all look pretty similar visually, which can get a bit dull, but again, each one has a slightly different quirk that makes them feel unique. For one cauldron, you find the core quickly, but then discover that you need to find a way to haul a battery to reboot it. In another, you end up building the head of a tall neck that has jammed the cauldron's machinery, and so on and so forth. They're all a little bit different. These side quests were worthwhile distractions from the main story. I never felt annoyed at having to get them done, and there weren't an absurd amount of them, so they never grew old. The main story continues by establishing a base in the mountains, followed by some pretty plot-heavy exposition. Ultimately, we're sent out to collect three MacGuffins, and here's where the game tries to introduce some non-linearity. In theory, you can pick these up in any order, although I just went with the kind of recommended order based on level. The first path has you working with a Logan tribe that ultimately culminates with maybe the biggest action set piece in the game, where a ton of machines attack your camp. You eventually end up in a battle in an arena with this giant snake machine. It was pretty good. The second path takes you to a flooded Las Vegas where you'll improve your swimming abilities and ultimately turn the lights back on in the city. And then the final path sends you into more research facilities where you're given a lot more lore and have to navigate some mazes to meet another tribe. I felt like this one was the weakest. These missions all highlighted one of the strengths of the game the big machine encounters are all pretty epic. These different missions highlight the elephant, big Loch Ness monster type creature, and this pretty terrifying invisible bat. Now, I won't lie, when you get down to it, all these fights essentially boil down to scanning the thing and shooting at the yellow spots, so they do start to feel a little bit similar. Granted, each machine has some weaknesses that you can exploit, but I never focus too much on that. I just tended to use strong weapons and eventually dealt enough damage to, to these machines. But something about the scale of these fights and the unique attacks of each machine really make it fun. It's challenging too. I'm playing on normal difficulty here, and these slip fights would take up to five minutes where you're never too far away from dying at any time. After turning in the three separate MacGuffins, the main quest moves on to its last stages. You finally make it to the ocean and can see some San Francisco landmarks. There are a couple of story twists and turns, you learn how to fly on a bird, and ultimately beat the final boss. At this point, we're up to 31 trophies. There were 11 from completing the main game, and then as you've seen, we've started picking up trophies for completing some side activities. We also got some trophies for leveling up and filling out various skill trees. It's now time to turn our attention to the remaining side quests. Throughout the main game, you've been building up a squad in your main base. Each of these people have a side quest that you need to complete. 
For Zoe, her quest is about the people of Plainsong. You need to help save their god and heal their land. When you finish this quest, the area around Plainsong is brought back to life, which was a nice detail. Kotalo here wants help building a prosthetic arm. Turns out this guy's a beast in a fight, and I really like this quest because you get a fight alongside of him. Erend is another side character that wants your help. After clearing out the majority of rebel outposts on the map, Erend wants your help taking down one of the rebel leaders. This quest was quite a long one because you had to take out all of these different rebel outposts, but take a look at this final fight. Didn't put up much resistance at the end. I have to say, I thought the Platinum Trophy handled side quests really well. There are a ton of side quests in this game, but for the most part, the Platinum only forces you to do these side quests that are associated with your friends from the base. There are tons and tons of side quests featuring other characters that only appear briefly in the game. I did a few of those, and they were fun enough, but I'm glad you weren't forced to do every single one. Let's talk about some of the other more unique activities you'll find throughout the game. The first one made me laugh. Early in the game, you come running into a town center of one of the very first towns that you visit, and surprise, surprise, someone is sitting at a table ready to teach you all about robot chess. It's still just like such a classic move by an open world game that's trying to do a little bit too much. Don't get me wrong, I would be super into this if robot chess was really compelling, but it just wasn't quite interesting enough. My very basic strategy was to do nothing, let my opponents walk his units into my range, and then take them out fairly easily. I haven't played The Witcher 3 yet, but I know about Gwent, and it seems like they were trying to replicate that idea. There are various people around the world that you can get new units from and build up your pieces, but I never really interacted with any of that. I got the one trophy related to robot chess after beating two different people at the game. Another somewhat random trophy was the one for winning two gauntlet runs, which are races. These were actually pretty fun. You can shoot your weapon to slow down opponents and pick up item boxes for boosts. I certainly enjoyed this more than robot chess, and it kind of reminded me of Diddy Kong Racing, but maybe that's just because we're racing giant dinosaurs. Again, we got our trophy after winning the second race. The last category of trophies I'll highlight are the trophies related to the hunting grounds. Hunting grounds are an activity that returned from Zero Dawn. These are short, timed challenges that ask you to take down a machine in a creative way. One hunting ground focuses on stealth, another focuses on overriding machines, and so on. You need to complete every hunting ground in the game, but only need to get a quarter stripe on each challenge, which is the easiest stripe to get. Nevertheless, I thought that these trophies were probably the hardest in the entire Platinum. They require you to use mechanics that you're probably ignoring in the rest of the game, and many of those mechanics require patience. While I didn't love these trophies, I think they're fair to be in the game. I think a Platinum trophy should represent everything a game has to offer, and so I think it's more than fair for at least a few of these trophies to require to use mechanics like stealth that you might not use in the rest of the game. Here I am picking up the trophy for beating the last of the hunting grounds. After spending some time doing final cleanup, we're two trophies away from the Platinum. This run requires you to get to level 50. After doing all of the other cleanup, I was around level 46. As I said earlier, there's a ton of other side quests in the game that I skipped. So if you're interested in doing those, that will probably get you to around level 50 naturally. So there really won't be a ton of grinding needed. But by the time I got to this point, I was running out of steam with the game a bit. I didn't really want to do those quests. So I decided to farm some of the bigger machines you find way out west. I probably had an hour or so of running back and forth between these two spawn points. Not too bad, all things considered. Alright, we're at our last trophy, and this one's an easy one. I saved it for the end to get some nice footage for the Platinum. For this trophy, you need to glide for 60 seconds straight. I picked my favorite spot in the game, downtown San Francisco, flew my bird up to the top of the tallest tower I could find, jumped off, and... well, I was not high enough. I tried this a couple more times, and ultimately figured this place wasn't going to work, which was too bad. So instead, I went to the center of the map, where there are some enormous mountains, and did my jump from there.
And there we go. There's the Platinum Trophy. I was super excited to get this one. It was Platinum number 45. Let me give you some of my thoughts about the trophy in general and the game in general. Overall, I really like the Horizon series. I think the thing that sticks out to me most is that it really commits to the story, the setting, the characters, the sequels that actually build off each other. I think it does that better than most video games, maybe other than The Last of Us and God of War. Like, I think that this is one of the best narrative video games out there. I also think the environments themselves are gorgeous. Probably my favorite thing with these games is finding little hidden Easter eggs from the real world. I loved going to San Francisco in this game. In Zero Dawn, I really liked being in Denver and the Rocky Mountains. I think that those are Easter eggs that are super fun to find and add a little bit of um, uniqueness to the game. I think where the game struggles is that it is another big open world game. I personally am getting a little bit tired of them. Uh, you know, it just follows a couple of the tropes that you'll see in other games, a million collectibles, lots of systems that you probably will not use in your first playthrough. I know that some people probably will dive deep into these systems and get a lot more out of it than I did, but I really never felt the need to, and I didn't really want to. So I think the negatives are just kind of big open world fatigue. Before I ended this video, I wanted to say that as I was playing this game, the actor Lance Riddick died, which is just a, a terrible shame. He played Silence in this game. He was a great actor, first of all. Um, I loved Lost back in the day, and he was in a couple of episodes of Lost. Uh, I think only four episodes, but he left such an impact. And then in these games, he played Silence, such a great character, really drove a lot of the mystery and the exposition and the world building. So it's a huge shame to lose him. Um, he was likely going to be in the third game. At the end of this game, they set up. He's still in the story. And so it's just a shame to lose him. I wanted to say that before, uh, before ending this video. That being said, uh, that's the end of this video. We are 45th Platinum. I've gotten a couple of Platinum since then. I think I'm sitting at 47 right now, so I'm closing in on number 50. I don't quite know what I want to do for number 50. My favorite genre of game is either roguelites or really difficult platformers. I've gotten things like Crash 4 already. I'm thinking maybe I want to do Super Meat Boy. I know that that will be a big, big challenge, but I definitely think I'm up for it. So if you have ideas about difficult games that you want to see me play or interesting Platinums to get, definitely leave a comment, let me know. And then yeah, this was the first video that I've ever made for this channel. So if you've made it this far, first of all, thank you very much. It was fun to put this together. And I hope it was at least somewhat interesting. And please give me feedback. I, uh, I didn't have a mic and camera set up when I was recording footage for the game, so I couldn't do any sort of gameplay reaction, but I know that that's very popular. If that's something you'd like to see, definitely let me know. And then anything else, uh, please comment, give me feedback, let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, anything like that is fine. And then finally, as always, a subscription would definitely help uh, and go a long way and uh, help me make more of these. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.